We are joined by Representative Marcy Kaptur, Democrat from Ohio. She serves the 9th District, also a member of the Appropriations Committee, and here to talk about, amongst other things, the state of renegotiation of NAFTA. Good morning to you. Good morning, Pedro. A pleasure to be on your program, and I thank your listeners for listening. For those who don't follow it closely, talk about the state of NAFTA uh, renegotiations. What's the purpose of the, the federal government at this time, and what do you see happening with that? Well, uh, the president, uh, during his campaign, uh, talked about the renegotiation of NAFTA, and it is underway. Uh, for our region of the country, uh, this is a very prime issue. Um, I have a map here showing how many of our Great Lakes states have lost jobs and how many jobs. Ohio, uh, since 1993, has lost over 34,900, 35,000 jobs uh, to uh, outsourcing and to low-wage platforms. And uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Indiana, I mean, this whole region uh, was uh, dealt a, a real blow when NAFTA originally passed in the uh, early 90s. So this renegotiation uh, is now in its third round between Mexico, Canada, and the United States. And we hope to change the framework of NAFTA in order that it work for all people on the continent. So specifically, how do you make that work to have it work for all people, as you say? Well, uh, let's take a look at the automotive industry, which is really in the crosshairs here. Uh, back in 1993, uh, if you look at the two-way trade between Canada, United States, and Mexico, you'll see that there were more Canadian imports coming into the United States than we were exporting there, and a small amount uh, coming in from uh, being sent from Canada to Mexico. What's happened since 1993 is Mexico has become this low-wage manufacturing platform affecting both uh, Canada and the United States with a mammoth uh, $68 billion uh, trade deficit just in auto and auto parts with the United States and Mexico. That is astounding. That is the major category of deficit with Mexico. And what was going on, if you step back and look at an even bigger frame, the United States said back then, well, gosh, America's got to compete with Japan. It's got a closed market in autos. Till today, it has a closed market. Uh, China was coming on board. Uh, China manipulates trade, right? State-owned companies and so forth. So how are we going to compete? Well, you know, we got to create this low-wage manufacturing platform. We've got to reduce wages. We've got to reduce benefits. And this is the way we're going to do it. And there was no protection for workers and what happened in my part of the country, where the rug was completely pulled out from under them, they lost their jobs, they lost their futures. Some have had two and three jobs since then if they repotted and went into another uh, uh, company. Uh, many had to leave the region, but what's happening today is they're losing their pensions. Because a lot of the companies have closed, so who's going to guarantee the pension? I have a bill, Keep Our uh, Pension Promises Act, to try to deal with that. They lost their health benefits. Uh, the company used to provide that. And their ability to send their children on to school after high school. So it was very upending to millions of people. So what specifically has to be changed in the language, not only in the auto industry, but in other fronts, to make sure there's enough balance going on? Well, first of all, I think we have to look at the workers that were affected. And there have to be labor provisions in the renegotiated NAFTA to help make them whole. In other words, their pensions have to be protected. And it isn't their fault that the company closed. And there are ways to do that. I think looking forward, we have to have a labor secretariat over the uh, continent and a very independent, powerful organization to enforce labor standards and environmental standards as well over these three countries, because otherwise what you have is you have outsourcing to a country that is struggling. Uh, the drug trade and, and other issues have really impacted our continental relations now. And um, those, the wage rates are very low. Uh, we have to come into a common contract across uh, North America, or we're going to continue to have outsourcing to the lowest wage um, most environmentally degraded uh, partner in the Americas. A discussion on NAFTA and its current renegotiation with our guest, Representative Marcy Kaptur of Ohio, 202-748-8000 for Democrats, Republicans 202-748-8001.
and Independence 202 748 You can also post on Twitter at CSPANWJ when it comes to topics of the automobile industry, which you highlighted. Uh, the Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross said that in context of NAFTA. He said this, Two major objectives for NAFTA are raising the total NAFTA content requirement, raising the U.S. share of that requirement, especially in auto and auto parts. If we don't fix the rules of origin, negotiations on the rest of the agreement will fail meaningfully to shift the trade imbalance. He goes on from there, but can you talk about these rules of origin and how that fits into the larger picture of the discussions going on? Yes, uh, this is a big issue, and it's more than the parts. It's the people making the parts. We have to make sure that they're under the same standards so that they're not competing against one another, but that we're part of a North American family uh, if we're going to be a part of this NAFTA. And he understands that, uh, you know, if you're making wiring harnesses in Mexico and you're being paid two bucks an hour and you really don't have health benefits and you don't have retirement benefits and you're working in Toledo, Ohio or Detroit, Michigan or wherever, Avon, Ohio, Avon Lake, Ohio, uh, that um, the incentive to move that production elsewhere is enormous. So uh, rules of origin uh, need to be a part of this, but, but go to the worker. Let's not just talk about parts. Let's talk about people and the way workers, people who want to work, uh, how they're treated in this deal. Let me just say this also, that there are a lot of companies that now say, oh, well, we're looking for workers, but you know, people don't want to come and work here. Uh, and what's been eroded since NAFTA's initial passage is actually the value of work itself. Why should you work if you lose your pension, uh, you lose your health benefits, uh, your job gets taken out from underneath you, and you're treated like a piece of chattel? So we've got to deal not just with the parts, but the people that make the parts. And we have to make them part of a North American Continental Compact for production. That is a much more difficult place to go but then you uplift living standards rather than drive them down across this continent. And I have been into many plants in Mexico, and I have seen the conditions under which those workers work. It is abominable. You would not treat a human being that way. We have a viewer on Twitter who says,